This next project is a traffic simulation. And the idea with this is we're not just going to have multiple classes that we're dealing with. We're actually going to use something called inheritance, which is a particular class can be a child of another class. And this allows us to actually write less code and use something called polymorphism, where parents and children can be referred to in particular ways. And it actually makes it easier to uh, organize your program. So the general idea is that we're actually going to draw kind of a four lane highway. We're going to have three different kinds of cars. At least three are required. I'm going to have what I call a semi, an SUV, and a compact car. So just three different sizes, and they're going to have different speeds. So semi is going to have the largest footprint. If you want to add acceleration, that's extra credit. But they are going to have the lowest top speed. And SUVs are going to be moderate. Sports cars are the smallest. So create a panel that is going to draw each of the steps of the simulation. The idea is that at a particular step, you're going to have every car draw itself and then figure out where it needs to be in the next step. So I take the first semi and I go, all right, once you uh, move, where are you going to be located? And are you going to hit another car? If you're not going to hit another car, go ahead and move yourself to that position. We're also going to have this highway just kind of wrap around. So when it gets off the right side, it's going to go back to the left side. There's going to be some basic buttons, a little bit like Conway's life. So you're going to have some sort of interface that actually adds vehicles in. You have something to start the simulation and something to stop it. The way that you do the interface actually doesn't matter that much to me. You could have it that you click on the screen. You could have it that you randomly place them. You could have them that they only start at the beginning of the lane and you have to run it for a little while to add more. It's up to you how you do it. And then this has to do with the implementation, which I'll go over here in just a minute. So to begin with, let's create a new project. So traffic. Inside of traffic, I'm going to create a class. The first class is going, I'm just going to call traffic, and that's going to be my main one. That's where the programming is going to start. And it's going to do all the setup. And this will basically contain my frame and my buttons and do what it's supposed to do there. So this will have my JFrame in it eventually. New JFrame, traffic simulation. And before I forget, Traffic is a new traffic. Traffic. I guess I could just say new traffic because I'm not going to use this variable again. If I needed to save it, I would actually create that. Import the JFrame, and away we go. All right, so that's the first class I'm going to need. This can be my main class. Eventually, it's going to have an action listener, a runnable event, things like that. All right, so. I think I'm going to have my road actually be the panel. So I'm going to create a new class, which is going to be my road. And this is going to extend JPanel, much like we did with uh, Conway's Life, where we had our MyPanel class. This is going to be the thing that actually draws everything. So what is a road going to have in it? Well, eventually it's going to have a list of all the vehicles on it. And it's also going to have the paint components the thing that actually draws things on the screen. So before I forget, let's just put that one in. Public void paint component. Make sure you spell it right. Graphics G. I need to import that from AWT. And this is actually going to have the drawing thing. The first thing I should probably do is make sure I call the paint component method from JPanel. And what that does is it clears it so that it basically redraws it from a blank slate. Otherwise, I might get kind of a streaking as the road does, leaves its graphics the way it was. All right, so there's going to be some more classes to this thing. So we're actually going to have sports car, semi, and SUV be vehicles that are going to go on this. But they're going to have something in common. So every time that I move, I'm actually going to want it to draw itself. So it's going to have its own. Um, painting method, actually. So I'm basically going to hand it the roads to draw on, and it's going to draw itself, rather than having the road try and figure out every x and y coordinate of everyone. Now, because they all have these things in common, it's going to have an x position, a y position, a speed, a width, and a height. They may be slightly different widths and heights, but they are going to have variables like that. I'm actually going to take all of those common components and put them into a superclass, well, a parent class. So I'm going to say vehicle for this. 
So this thing is going to actually contain all the data that all of my vehicles are going to have. So for example, I'm probably going to want an int x, y, so the position on the screen that the particular vehicle is at. It's probably a good idea to have a width and a height so I know how big or tall to draw something. And probably a speed would be a good idea. I'm going to use uh, an integer. You could use a double if you want more precision. And then the other thing this thing is going to have is its own painting method. So public void. I'm going to create my own name for this. It is going to take a graphics thing, which I need to import. And this will be the thing that I have it draw. Now, something that's kind of weird is I'm actually never going to create one of these vehicles. It's basically just a template for anything that's a child of this. Before I get too much further, let's make sure that I have something testable. Um, so now I need to set its size. Uh, this is going to be pretty big, so maybe 800 by 600. I should set the default close operation. And I should make it visible. So let's start with that. There we go. Big window. OK. The next thing I'd like to do is actually create a road and add it to this thing. So I should set the layout first. I'm going to use a border layout and basically put the road in the center and buttons down in the south, which will eventually be a grid layout. Um, road at the moment doesn't have a constructor. I should probably do that real quick. Public road. At the moment, I don't think I need anything yet, but eventually I might fill this in with some information. So I'm going to call jpanels constructor for now. That's what this means is call superclass jpanels constructor. Much in the way this means, hey, go call jpanels paint component. So next, I should say create a road. which is a jpanel, and well, it's a child of jpanel. So I need to add road into the center. And I should probably have the road draw something so I can make sure it's working. So from 0, 0 to, I don't know, 300, 500. There we go. So if the road's in there, I should see this line. There we go, big line. All right, so I should probably actually set up the layout of the road itself. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make kind of, I'm going to fill in this whole section with black. And I'm going to make kind of dotted yellow lines that are going to go across. So let's see. I think that I'm going to use uh, a variable which keeps track of the lane height. And I think I'm going to make it a constant. So. This way, I can actually make sure that, so if I want to change this, I can just change it in one spot instead of having to hunt through all my code to figure out where I need to go. So the first thing I should do is I should make sure that I fill in a box. So I need to set the color. And I'm just going to use black. Then I need to draw a filled rectangle from 0, 0 to, well, the width of the panel to the height of the panel. By the way, technically you don't need this keyword this. Get width and get height will actually work. By default, if you don't put anything before a method, it assumes you mean this dot, whatever this is. So uh, get width, it assumes it's uh, roads get width and height, which is coming from jpanel. Notice with a graphics thing, I actually had to set it. I had to say the set color method is in G, which is a graphics object. Black. All right. So next, I should set up some yellow lines, I guess. Well, actually, now that I think about it, maybe those should be white lines. Yellow lines means that there's traffic going the other direction. Anyway. So let's see. I guess I'll make a series of filled rectangles. Um, and it'll be a pretty regular pattern. I think I'm going to use a for loop for this, because I love me some for loops. I think I'm going to use A for this, just because. And I'm going to be doing, let's see, if I have four lanes, I need three sets of lines between them. 
So I'm going to be doing a filled rectangle. And I need a for loop for however many lines I'm going to do inside of this filled rectangle. So this loop is which lane I'm drawing, which line I'm actually drawing. So one interesting thing I could do, rather than doing the multiplication within my filled rectangle, I could just set up my loop here to automatically set whatever the width of my lines are. So if I say, for example, keep going while b is less than get width, instead of just adding 1 here, what if I say, let's say that I want to make it 30 pixels across, and I want to skip by, I don't know, 35s. So I'm going to change b there. So my x position is going to be just b. My width might be 30. My height is going to be however big the lines are. I'm going to try maybe 5 for now. And y is going to be 150 plus a times 150. And actually, if I'm holding to this idea of putting it all in the same spots, what I might do is just have a start at 150 and keep going until it reaches 600. So then this is just a. So it turns out that when you're doing things that are regular patterns and it's some multiple, you can either make the for loop variable itself change pr appropriately, or you can do the multiplication within here and multiply it by whatever your for loop variable is. Yeah, those are a little close. Why don't you skip by 40? Would that be better? Yeah, sure, that's fine. And by the way, this 150 here should be lane height, now that I think about it. And the reason why is, so notice that doesn't make any change here. But what it does do is instead of having hunt, to hunt down all the 150s in here, if I'm like, yeah, I don't like the width of those lanes, I think I'll do 120. I can do that, and it automatically takes care of it. There we go. 